Chief Quartermaster Patrick H. Grace was one of the many enlisted sailors who stepped into leadership roles in the U.S. Navy during the 19th century, before there was an official Chief Petty Officer rank. During Grace's service, he established himself as a skilled navigator and communicator, landing him in the position of Chief Quartermaster on the USS Benicia, a steam-powered sloop ship built in 1868. As a quartermaster, Grace was charged with the difficult task of navigating the steamship in an era without the help of today's navigation technology, relying on often incorrect nautical charts and difficult-to-use tools like a chronometer. Little is known of the personal history of Patrick Grace, only that he was born in Ireland in 1832 and enlisted into the U.S. Navy in Pennsylvania. In 1871, Grace joined the USS Benicia and the rest of her crew as the ship started a new deployment as part of the newly established Asiatic Squadron. Replacing the East India Squadron in 1868, the Asiatic Squadron was established in part with the goal of building a good faith relationship with Korea to support U.S. naval expeditions throughout East and Southeast Asia. Led by Rear Admiral John Rogers, who had earned his reputation during the Civil War, in 1870, the Asiatic Squadron was tasked with bringing statesman Frederick Ferdinand Lowe, American minister to China, to, quote, secure a treaty for the protection of shipwrecked mariners, end quote, with Korea, and to establish a commercial relationship in East Asia, a region dominated by Chinese presence. By mid-May 1871, five U.S. naval ships departed from Nagasaki, Japan, heading for the western coast of the Korean Peninsula, a region known for its isolation to foreigners. A flotilla of five ships, the USS Colorado, USS Alaska, USS Palos, USS Monocacy, and the USS Benicia, with Patrick Grace aboard, made their way from Japan to Korea's western coast by May 19, 1871. Over the next two weeks, the ships made short incursions upriver, looking to establish diplomatic connections with local officials. These incursions and the events that unfolded between June 1st and June 11th would become known to historians as the Korean Expedition. On June 1st, the first problems began when the U.S. ships tried to enter the Sali River, a river with great religious significance to the Koreans. In response to their presence, the U.S. ships were attacked by Korean forces from forts on the side of the river. They returned fire before turning back to reevaluate their plan. The U.S. fleet gave Korean officials 10 days to explain what happened and to apologize for what the Navy deemed an unprovoked attack. When nothing satisfied Admiral Rogers, he ordered the fleet inland to allow for a landing party to attack the forts. On the afternoon of June 10th, a landing party of 546 sailors and 105 Marines were taken up the mouth of the river, where they disembarked into an unwelcoming terrain filled with mud and steep hills. Chief Quartermaster Grace would navigate the Benicia through the narrow straits of the Sali River to carry out Rogers' command. Chief Grace and the quartermasters of the other ships were ordered to stay close by to provide fire support for the landing party despite the difficulties in navigating the shallow waters. In the end, the U.S. would claim an unambiguous victory, with Admiral Rogers recording in his report that, quote, the victory is one which the Navy may feel very proud, end quote. The landing force stormed five forts up the banks of the Sali River, in total claiming the lives of 250 Korean fighters while only losing three American lives. Still, the U.S. fleet was unable to establish a foothold further up the river and failed to establish any amicable relationship with the Koreans, forcing the U.S. to leave the Sali River empty-handed on July 3, 1871. Another decade would pass before any trade relationship would be effectively established with Korea. Today, Patrick Grace and the entire Korean expedition have been left to historical obscurity, but contemporaries to the event paid close attention to its outcome. Americans at home read the newspapers closely as their mission to establish peaceful relations turned sour and ended in the American flag being planted in Asia. Reports in the newspaper on the home front highlighted the tension between the sailors and Admiral Rogers over the reasons that the U.S. would intervene in Korea. One sailor was quoted as saying, I don't think the lives we lost could ever be made up by any gain we could get out of Korea. Quote. 
Chief Quartermaster Patrick Grace was one of the many enlisted sailors in the U.S. Navy who went above and beyond his call of action and proved himself to be an invaluable asset to the Navy and its mission in East Asia. With a keen sense of responsibility, Grace successfully navigated the Manisha through the shallow and dangerous waters of the Saley River, bringing aid and support to the 600-plus sailors and marines who took the riverside forts. For his actions that day, Grace would receive a posthumous Medal of Honor in 1915, an honor given out more regularly before the establishment of the Navy Cross in 1919.